Oh, I love you. Well, let's talk soon. Okay, bye, honey. My favorite gay couple broke up. Sorry, I send my condolences. Ooh, did someone break up? Yeah. Like divorce break up or We're just gay. break up, break up? Do they need me? No, they just broke up. Okay, well, encourage more marriage. See, yet another reason for gay marriage to be legal. We could take those cases. It would be great for business. Economic stimulation. <laughs> my name is Maggie Jo Hilliard. I own a successful law firm in Jacksonville, Florida. Objection, Your Honor. I'm lucky because I get to work with amazing women. I still think we need an investigation. There's Lauren, who specializes in family law. I'm on your side, but I'm also trying to make you very realistic with what the court can do. Then there's Cynthia, civil law. The judicial system is here for justice. And finally, Casey, our assistant. Is that one of your skirt? Yeah, that's good. it. <laughs> Together, we are zealous advocates for people in need. What is Donnie getting from the marriage after all that he put in it? And what we do is all about justice. I've been practicing law for about five years, so technically speaking, I'm still a young lawyer. Looking good, Maggie Jo. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Say hi to Aunt Casey. Casey is my right and left arm on days when I am incredibly busy. Okay, so tattoos, guys, come and check in. Okay, yeah, and we grab the HP cartridges for cartridges. I can't do anything without Casey. So what's this I hear about you getting a new tattoo? <laughs> No? I'm not getting a new tattoo. We have this new client that's got a tattoo parlor or something. I met Cynthia my first year of law school. When the opportunity to work with her arose, I was more than glad to take her on. We could celebrate your big 3-0 with a new tattoo for you. Let's talk about that to this week. It's 29 plus 1. Thanks. 29 plus 1. I love working with Maggie. I just work with a big group of girlfriends. It's not puppies and kittens all the time, but it's just like having your sisters around. Lauren was my very first friend from law school. She can go from being a wild party girl to an incredibly serious and zealous advocate like that. I have something for you, by the way. Um, I'm wearing your oldest child on my jacket. Lauren, you're so tall. This is like doing this to an interstate. I'm just going down. <laughs> I'm like, man. Well, as long as I'm like a two-lane interstate and not a three-lane. No, no, honey, you're, okay, you're like a one-way road. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm Robert Amon here. I'm supposed to be here for Maggie. Maggie Jo? Yes. Maggie, this is Robert. Hi, Robert. Oh, hi. How are you? Uh, a little no bit, a little bit confused. And no one ever comes to a lawyer and says, I'm so glad to be here. Well, okay, let me take that out of your hands for well. you. Robert Amar is my client. He owns a tattoo parlor out in Middleburg, Florida. You're the first female attorney I chose. So this really? Is gonna be, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> well, thank right you. Now. It's awkward to have a client bringing this kind of attention to me in this manner, that I have to come and get your assistance. I'll let you walk me through it all. I won't interrupt you. There was two parts to this tattoo. She brings in a simple design. Three little flowers, kind of cartoony. She got in a place he told her would be a difficult spot because uh, on the top of your foot, you're, you don't have a lot of flesh there. She came back for, I assume, touch-up work, but from what I understand, it went beyond to adding some blue water effect around the tattoo. How large would you estimate the tattoo to have been? From what I understand, it's, it's only about that big. Okay, so about originally. three inches but by an inch. But now I understand, inches. besides that, it's gotten bigger. Morning. How are you doing today? I've been good. How have you been? Pretty good. And just to recap, we don't have any children issues. We have a short-term marriage. My client, Donnie, is a husband in a divorce action, and I've been having to address this issue with Donnie and Natalie for quite some time. And I think that if I can get them to an early mediation, I can get them divorced as soon as possible. I don't think that there's a valid claim for alimony. I think she's gonna ask for some temporary, transitional, whatnot. I think we walk in and we say, mm -mm, we're not giving you anything but understand the law provides for her half of what was ever incurred during the marriage, whether it's an asset or liability, should be divided. 
I'm excited for you and I'm excited for this to be over with because I do think that you will find someone who is more similar to you. I went through mine and I lost 25 pounds. It was the best diet ever, <laughs> but I don't wish that on anyone. My husband and I were divorced this year. Going through a divorce myself, I know what that feels like, so I have a lot of empathy for my clients. I'm dealing with good people and just a bad time of their life. I'd rather be alone than be miserable and unhappy like I've been now for two years. Okay, so tell me, you, you understood she got the tattoo on the top of her foot. The okay. artist is no longer with us. Oh, goodness. And why was he released? Because I didn't like how he was dealing with me. Were you served with any documents? Here. I know this attorney. I do. Oh, okay. It just so happened that her attorney was Heath Brockwell. I was a little bit caught off guard on that. He was my mentor. Heath and I were pretty close back in the day whenever I was working at his law firm. I'd like to try to find a way to settle this matter because uh, no matter what, she's unhappy. I'm gonna do a little bit of research and get back in touch with you if that's okay. okay. Yeah, no, not a problem. All right. well, it was a pleasure to meet you and I'm so sorry you're having to go through this. Nice to meet you. You as well. Have a good day. Oh my God, y'all. Nikki, go to your aunt Cynthia. Okay. Well, I, have, I have my lip roller with me. I have a case against my first boss. My really? first boss ever, yeah. Time, Heath? Right? Yeah, I'm gonna have a case with Heath. Didn't you used to date him? I did not date him. I never did. I but mean... There, wasn't there something? There was something there. Come clean, dude. Oh, well, she's I mean, lying. She's, she's lying. lying. <laughs> I'm not no, even no, no, sitting no. by you. No. <laughs> like flirtation and fun you know how that is you so. flirt with me but I don't think you like me I'm a flirty person you know so I mean of course there was always banter he's a he's a good friend now he's just a friend friend <laughs> seriously <laughs> oh my god you guys are so awful okay give me my letter give me my letter <laughs> you <laughs> I thought she was gonna pick up give me the damn letter <laughs> don't give me shit <laughs> whatever you banged enough lawyers Lauren no I don't know I'll tell you later, but I will say that this case did get really interesting now. I'm giving Heath a call because I know he is a plaintiff's attorney, always has an interest in settling his case, and my client wants to settle it too. Hey Heath, it's Maggie Jo, how are you? Hey, how are you? I'm good, thanks. I think I may have a case with you. Meredith Wiseman, what's going on with this? Yeah, she got a bad tattoo. Okay. Why don't we get together for dinner tonight and discuss the case? I don't know if I can do that tonight. Why does Heath want to go to dinner? I don't really understand. I do lunches with attorneys, like between the hours of 8 and 5, but dinner, it's a little awkward for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, sounds good. Where do you want to meet? Okay, thanks, Heath. All right, Okay, bye. It's just a little unnerving, and it makes me uncomfortable. But if that's what he wants to do, that's part of settling the case. How's it going? Good, how are you? I'm so sorry I'm late. No, that's all right. Where have you been? I know, you're always late, it's okay. It's my job. So, I know What's the feeling. new? Oh, it's um, just running the new firm. Yeah? It's all good. Well, you look great. Yeah, so do you. Thank you. Oh, uh, you look phenomenal. Thank you. <laughs> how about you dating anyone? No. No? No, I just... No. So how's the single life? You know, you've been a little it's bit good. out of the game. Which yeah. Is good. Yeah. yeah, I mean... It's good, you know, sometimes yeah. I think about like what I might have missed out on, I think about things like that, but I don't, I, I try not to dwell on it, you know, because yeah. this is what I asked for, this is what I wanted. You know? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're running your firm, and it yeah. seems like it's going well. It's crazy. It's, yeah, but it's good to see you. It's so good to see you. I'm kind of nervous about Keith, because back in the day there was a whole lot of flirtation, and I really want him to know that this is a professional relationship. I'm so excited. I have a case with you. <laughs> and of all the cases for you to get. I know. I get an artist. The tattoo case. Rock out. <laughs> well, and I thought about that. I was thinking, you know, my client's tattoo on her foot looks hideous. 
boil it all down, the issue is this. I mean, he added a background that she never consented to. Yeah, I, I don't think my guy is liable. My but feeling is that the owner's going to be on the hook because this guy's working for him. And, and, you know, I've spoken with him, and, you know, he is the kind of guy that he just, he would like to be done with this. He, he wants to right. settle. I think it would be in the best interest of your client to settle as well. Yeah, I don't see that happening. I mean, I, I can tell you, I mean, in Mags, you know, I'll give it to you straight. This girl went in, and they screwed up her foot. We're going to go to court. I'm ready. Good? Go. Absolutely. Let's do it. So it's official. The gloves are off. Although I wanted to settle the case, I wanted to proceed cordially with my old mentor. Unfortunately, we're going to trial, and it, I, I don't think it's as unfortunate for me as it will be for him. Cheers. I'm, I'm very happy for all of your success. Thank you. Same to you. Thank you. What a reward. I got a great case. <laughs> She's a newbie. Well, you know, relatively speaking. I've been practicing law for 70 years. Are those your initials by every paragraph here? Yes. And is that your signature at the bottom? Yes. I thought I was going to have to really jump in there when Cynthia started going after my client. Pardon me. I'm sorry. I was talking to Mr. Mead here, I'm sure. I wasn't talking to you. So mind your own business, I'm talking to you. The plaintiff claims that this is a straightforward negligence cause of action. And the only negligence that was committed was by the plaintiff to herself. How's it going? How are you? All right, how are you? I'm really concerned and worried about the fact that the artist is not going to be available for trial. Cynthia is my co-counsel on this. I wanted to pose Heath's client because it's important to know what her statements are going to be when she takes the stand. Without the artist, she is the only person setting the stage for the cause of action. Did you get some photographs yeah, for us? Yeah, just gives the progression after okay. the first time, second time. Okay. And our intent here is trying to get to know you, get to know your case and everything that happened. And I am showing you what's previously been marked as Defendant's Exhibit B in this case. It mm -hmm. appears to be a waiver form. Do you recognize this document? Yes. Mm -hmm. And are those your initials by every paragraph here? Yes. Mm -hmm. And is that your signature at the bottom? Yes. And when you received this document, did you read it prior to putting your signature on it? Honestly, I glanced. Okay. You know, we, um, I did read some of it, but in depth, I would say no. Well, um, how old are you again? 32. 32. And um, do you own your own home? Uh, mortgage, yes. You own a mortgage? Yeah. So you've signed a mortgage and a promissory note, correct? Mm -hmm. And when you went to closing, so you read those documents? Outside with me for just a yes, ma'am. I thought I was going to have to really jump in there when Cynthia started going after my client. Pardon me. I'm sorry. I pulled Cynthia out of the room to let her know her aggressive behavior wasn't going to be bringing us a whole lot of information. Maggie wants to approach it differently. It's Maggie's case. I wasn't out of line. I didn't break any rules. And I wasn't badgering her in any way. The time for cross-examination is when you bring those statements to light. You get them to admit to every single thing that you can in the deposition, and then you shove them in their face at trial. And so tell me a little bit about the process that led to the second tattoo. I decided to go back and I showed them my foot and told them what had happened. Did you jolt and kind of get nervous? I'm sure there were times I did move, but he never mentioned to me that I needed to be still. Did you feel him getting into areas where you knew that the previous tattoo was not? When I did sit up, and that's when I realized that he had added the green onto my foot without, you know, my permission. And I just told him to stop. Did you put any moisturizer on it? Mm -mm. No. No Vaseline? He said, I shouldn't tell you this, but you can pour peroxide on it. Did you pour peroxide on it? A couple of times, but it really, really hurt. So I didn't do it any more than that. I really don't think I need any more uh, answers. Well, I think we can conclude this deposition. Thank you for coming. I appreciate you making yourselves available. A deposition is a fishing expedition. Maggie's going to defend the case, uh, first of all, based on the waiver. They're going to try to say that you know she released them to any liability, which isn't going to work. Have a good day. This trial is going to be really hard for a lot of reasons, personal, professional, and strategically. Hi, my name is Lauren Kingery. I'm calling for Sharon on the Taylor case, please. Thank you. I'm calling opposing counsel in Donnie's case prior to going to mediation to make sure we're on the same page. I was kind of of the impression that this was a case 
only regarding equitable distribution, and I wanted to get your thoughts on that so we know what we're walking into tomorrow. There's no children born in the marriage, and at this point, I don't believe that my client is pregnant, and I hope that that is still the case. And <laughs> I hope so too. When I call Sharon, the issues I need to discuss are narrowing what issues are actually going to be brought up. I want to know before walking in so I can most importantly prepare my client so he doesn't hit the roof when they come in with this offer. She was talking about a $30,000 Rolex. I want one of those. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't, I'd like to see a $30,000 Rolex, but that's what she was talking well, about. Well, I'll go with him on that because, I mean, obviously, that I don't know when it was purchased and whatnot, and so we'll find out, you know, what the status on that is. I'll see you tomorrow, Sharon. All right, look forward to seeing you then. Thanks, you too. Bye. Bye-bye. If we have all this testimony and allegations from Meredith, we have no one to refute that except for the artist, who we can't find. I think what we need to do is to find an expert witness. In the field of? Tattoos. Okay, no, I, I, I see where you're coming. Let's send the interns to do it. Yeah. Are they here? Guys? Yo, what's up? Hey, Kurt and Cole are not really run-of-the-mill interns. I'm hoping to inspire them in a fashion that will help them to become more serious and zealous advocates. We got. Uh, we have a job for you. We want you guys to find us an expert in the field of tattoos. Someone that has experience and knows the art and science of tattoos. I'm going to give you guys copies of the files, but I don't want you to read through it in a legal sense, okay? I want you to use what you know from law school. This is the perfect project for you. Right. Because it's taking what knowledge you do have and finding someone. Could a random tattoo parlor try to find somebody? Do whatever you can do to get them. Start. I'm counting on you. Sounds good. Uh, case. Uh, yeah. Quit wadding that up. Put that in a file. <laughs> they wanted jobs. He was gun ho you know, so he wants to bring it. Let's bring it. Cynthia and I decided that we needed to go and visit with our client. It's always good to see the place where the alleged negligence occurred. Part of the strategy is going to come down to logic. No woman in their right mind would go back to a hairstylist and like completely chop their hair. The whole point is that she went to him. She doesn't go back for a week or two. You can't even get I think right she way. just changed her mind. Like going the right way. I hate taking cases in Middleburg. We've heard that the Broken Spoke is one of the most popular biker bars in Jacksonville. We think it'll be a good place to find an expert witness. Oh, so y'all got tattoos? Yeah. No? I, mean, I got a couple. Um, <laughs> how many tattoos would you say that you probably have? I have 11. You have 11 tattoos? How many tattoos would you all say you probably had? Probably 100. Probably 100? 100? Man, I'm a tattoo artist at Jacksonville Beach. But, uh, yeah. What we're working with is a woman who literally, she got one on the top of her foot. And uh, she's saying? moving around quite a bit whenever it was happening. And then she comes back with swelling and things like that. She wants to blame it on the artist. That's it's infected it. because she has not been taking care of it. Right? She's probably wearing socks. I was going to say, as, as a foot, shoes, things like that. Like, your shoes. Would you be available to testify in court as an expert? Yeah, oh yeah. The guys actually opened up quite a bit more than what I expected from when I first walked in. I think that Maggie's going to be pretty happy with the information that we got. Telephone number, address, email if you got it. Dorothy, we're not in Kansas anymore. Wow. <laughs> I have never been to a tattoo parlor, and judging from the outside, I'm kind of nervous. I know you can't judge a book by its cover, but this cover really sucks. It's good to see you again. Yeah, nice to see you. Thank you for having me. See you brought somebody else. lovely with you also. Absolutely. <laughs> Hi. Hi, I'm Cynthia. It's I'm nice Robert. to meet you. Good I'm also an attorney going to be helping you on the case. Oh, great. Absolutely. So I got two people so, shooting for me. Yeah. Absolutely. At my firm, we don't go at it alone. Do you have a place where we could speak in a, you know, private? Uh, uh, the artists are out right now. Why don't we just go in their room for a sure. moment? Sure. I hate being the bearer of bad news, um, but despite our best efforts to attempt to settle this case out of court, right. Unfortunately, Mr. Brockwell wants to go to trial. This whole event created a problem, not just for the client alone, but also to my own heart. Well, we've got to change a little bit of attitude here. Okay. So, apologies out the door. Those are statements of admission and they can hurt your case significantly. Okay. The fact that she was moving around when she was getting a tattoo, 
The fact that she left, didn't take care of it, and doesn't even mention until the end that she's unhappy with it shows you guys were not liable. We are going to be shifting gears from settlement and taking responsibility in some fashion and meeting halfway to zealously fighting and advocating on your behalf. We don't want to give them anything. It is their burden of proof. The plaintiff has to prove their case. Okay. I promise you, we, we will get you through this. My client is neither a tattoo artist nor an expert. I don't need an objection every five minutes, so this objection is overruled. She's trying to rate me for everything that's worth, you know, any decent value. Because you feel like I paid for, therefore it should be mine. I'll give her some of the smaller things. The court will not see it your way. Every time right before a trial, my stomach is not right, I can't really eat, I'm just incredibly nervous. It's always a problem with lawyers is that we can never feel prepared enough. I was up all night last night, I had about four hours of sleep. But I feel good. I'm running on adrenaline and I love that rush. Be seated please and come to order. Weissman versus Amar, Mr. Brockwell is the plaintiff ready. Yes, we are, sir. May it please the court. You may proceed. Judge, we're here today for the case of a tattoo gone horribly wrong. The largest tattoo starts to fade out, and the agreement was that he would touch up the flowers and the vine, nothing else. This is what she's ended up with. And so, Judge, we feel that once you hear all the testimony, that you're going to find that this is a clear case of, of negligence. Ms. Heyer? The plaintiff claims that this is a straightforward negligence cause of action. And the only negligence that was committed was by the plaintiff to herself. The crux of our defense today is that the plaintiff went in one time to get a tattoo. She chose to go back for the second tattoo. She chose for more color. Your Honor, I don't believe that the plaintiff has a negligence case. However, they do have a case, Your Honor, of buyer's remorse. Thank you. It's very typical in a divorce process for the parties to want to get even with each other. No, I'm so, taking my stuff out. I'm not so, worried about how the house looks. I was talking to Mr. the media, aren't you? I wasn't talking to you. Okay. So mind your own business, I'm talking to you. These are people who walk down the aisle who said to death do his part, they feel hurt. And so a lot of times the gloves come off. As you know, we're here for mediation today. As the mediator, I'm totally impartial. Each one of your attorneys are going to tell me the issues from your perspective. And once we get all that information, sometimes it's customary in a mediation that we split up in separate offices and talk separately with you and your attorneys. I believe, Mrs. Taylor, you filed the initial petition for divorce. Correct. So I'm going to let your attorney and you talk first. Ms. Gasparro? We are talking um, strictly about an equitable distribution of assets and liabilities. We have a marital home that we believe is valued at about $280,000. There's a number of jewelry that was purchased during the marriage and the husband actually purchased a Rolex that's probably valued at between twenty-five dollars and $30,000. Well, we have a position that stands a little uh, dissimilar. We agree that this is a great equitable distribution case, but we think that some of the items purchased during the marriage by Mr. Taylor would be subject to an unequal distribution. We primarily take issue with the jewelry being the Rolex. It was purchased for about $3,000, and it was from a non-marital fund. Oh, well, he can absolutely have the paint off of the walls that I purchased and the hardwood floors that I put into the house, and um, you're welcome to it. Well, we do believe there are other items that were purchased as well. Okay. All right, any questions before we split up? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Donnie and Natalie had not been separated for a very long period of time, and my experience is that the shorter the separation, the harder the case is to settle. Mr. Brockwell, you may call your first witness. Plaintiff calls Meredith Weisman. Ms. Weisman, raise your right hand. I think my class has come across very well. I think she'll be likable, and a lot of times it's very important. Is this the tattoo that you wanted? Yes. This is the tattoo you chose? Oh, it was what I chose, yes. Um, did you ever want a background behind the tattoo? No. Okay. Did he ever say to you, I'm going to go add this background to your tattoo? Objection, Your Honor, leading. Very well, I'll restate the question. Was there ever any discussion beyond filling in the flower? No. Did anyone in Mr. Amor's business verbally tell you or instruct you on aftercare instruction? No. Okay. Well, how do you feel about the tattoo now? I hate it. 
I have nothing further at this time. Ms. Hughes, would you like to cross-examine? Yes, Your Honor. May I please the court? You may proceed. I hope this judge is very patient with us because the cross-examination of Meredith is going to be a difficult one. I don't want him to be compassionate towards her, but she's a very sweet girl, and we could run into that. You're an adult, aren't you? Yes. And you graduated high school? Yes. Your testimony was today that you're suing because the tattoo was not pretty, is that right? Not an entirely. So you would agree that you failed to follow any aftercare instructions? Objection. She's testified she never received the instructions. Then the answer would be yes, Your Honor. She's entitled to a thorough and sifting cross. I'll allow her to proceed, Mr. Brockwell. Thank you. So you would agree that you did not follow any aftercare instructions? I guess no. You contacted the tattoo artist the day after you received the second tattoo, isn't that correct? Yes. He said, I shouldn't tell you this, but you can pour peroxide on it. I think it's really funny. This woman used peroxide on her tattoo. Gosh, I wonder what peroxide does to things of color. You color your hair just like I do, right? Mm -hmm. And we Objection, know that- Objection, relevance. Your Honor, I'll get there. It's kind of interesting. Let's proceed. We know there's peroxide in those chemicals that make our hair so blonde, right? And really what that's doing is it's removing pigment from the strands of hair, isn't that right? Yeah. So you know that if you were to put hydrogen peroxide on a tattoo the first day that you got it, it would probably remove the pigment, isn't that correct? Yes. Yeah. With regard to the green, there was a misunderstanding and you said what? I asked him what he was doing. And he said, I want to put on some blue. How about blue? Yes. And you didn't tell him to stop at any point prior to the completion of this tattoo, did you? No. No one was holding you down, were they? No. Thank you. Anything else of this witness? Nothing further. Fortunately for us, we got a great deal of admissions from Meredith. I think that we can proceed just solely on the basis that the plaintiff can't prove their case. Uh, Ms. Hayer, you may call your first witness. Your Honor, at this time, I would like to call my client, Mr. Robert Amar. Mr. Amar, come on up, please. Thank sir. you. Hi, Mr. Amar. Have you ever seen her before? Unfortunately, no. Could you please identify for me what I'm handing you? Two business cards for two different artists from my business. What is on the back of those cards? Standard tattoo aftercare. And what was your relationship with the tattoo artist? The funny thing about tattoo business, they're not really employees, they're artists. Would you say that he was an independent contractor? I guess you can call him that, yes. I have nothing further. All right, counsel, you may cross. Mr. Amor, are you a tattoo artist yourself? I've done tattoo, but I'm not a tattoo artist now. Let me first direct your attention to the, the top line below the name of your tattoo parlor. What does that say? Adult consent form. Do you think that this document releases you or one of your artists from their own negligence? I'm not able to answer that. Would you agree with me, Mr. Amar, that if one of your artists does a background on a tattoo, which is what happened in this case, that she didn't ask for, that that's not what you want to happen? Yeah, I would say that. That's true. That's not what a tattoo artist is supposed to do. He's not supposed to add background I, when the client didn't ask for it. He's, Would you agree he's badgering my witness because he's frustrated. He wants some kind of admission that he's just not going to get. My client is neither a tattoo artist nor an expert. I, I don't need an objection every five minutes, so this objection is overruled. Mr. Brockwell, let's proceed. But let's get through this case before the sun goes down. Please. Here is, this is all marital property. And the things with the dots are things that you would like to have. Correct. Right. Okay. You know, it's kind of like I get one room, you get the other room kind of deal. Well, I'm going to go down and talk to him, and we're going to go from there. Okay. Okay. Okay, guys. Fred. I think the best way to start is just to tell you what she wants. Sure. And we'll go from there. Okay. Uh, on the home, she wants to sell the home and equally split any proceeds. I'm apprehensive of that. I, I have to think about that if you don't mind. Donnie, this is a list of everything that's in the house that was purchased during the marriage. Is yeah. that laundry detergent? Yeah, I'm just, how petty is that? Once a case starts with liquid detergent, it's going downhill fast. That's a no, that's a no. All these things here, she doesn't have checks beside. These are what I already brought to the marriage. He wants it all. And so does his wife, Natalie. And so I've got to get them to meet in the middle somehow. All she's done is she's trying to rate me for everything that's worth, you know, any decent value. I know you feel host. <laughs> I know you do. Yeah. She feels host too. No, I, mean, I just I tell you feel, that I'm would... the one who goes to these cases all the time, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm on your side, but I'm also trying to make you very realistic with what the court can do because you feel like I paid for, therefore it should be mine. I'll give her some of the smaller things. The court will not see it your way. You're not going to get all of it. It's just not going to happen. Not, period, done. And Donnie just didn't get that. 
Mr. Nelson, how are you? Fantastic, how about you? I'm good, thank you. You look good. I'm sorry? You look good. This guy's hitting on me on the stand. What's the cost of your sanity? Obviously, you're a lawyer and you probably make a lot more money than I do. No, I look, I'm at the point where I feel like you're digging on me personally no, and I'm no, trying not. to help you. Get off my life, let's get on here. What do you think of this tattoo? I'm not happy with it. Yeah, why not? Because I know he does better work. Wouldn't you agree with the basic principle that the artist and the person getting the tattoo should agree on what she's getting? Absolutely. Does the artist and still work for you? No, sir. Nothing further. Redirect. You weren't there that night, right? No. You don't do tattoos, right? No. You're not an expert? No. You didn't hear any conversations between this woman and a guy that used to pay you a little bit to use some of your supplies, right? Objection to the way she asked the question. Also, I think it's been asked and answered. Fine, I think the point's been made. I'm just gonna sit down here on her. Sure. Thank you. Nothing Recross? No, sir. Mr. Amar, you can have a seat, sir. Thank you. Who's next? Your Honor, at this time, I'd like to call Matthew Nelson for as a rebuttal witness. Stand right in front here and raise your right hand, please. And saw me swear testimony given this case to be the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you guys. So help me God. Put your hand down. Have a seat right here to your right. State your name for the record, please. Matthew Robert Nelson. Hi, Mr. Nelson. How are you? Fantastic. How about you? I'm good. Thank you. You look good. I'm sorry? You look good. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> this guy's hitting on me on the stand. Do you have tattoos? Yes. In fact, I see one on your ankle there. And some of my arms. Oh, yes. And how many tattoos do you have? Lots. Are you also a tattoo artist? Yes. How long have you been a tattoo artist? One year. So is it your expert opinion and your testimony today that the photograph in front of you is as a result of aftercare? Objection. The objection is based on what? Witness has not been qualified as an expert. Would you like to vore dire the witness on his qualifications? Sure. You testified before you've been a tattoo artist for one year? Yes, sir. Okay. And before that, you were an apprentice? Yep. How long were you an apprentice? A year. He's only got two years of experience, and one of those was that of an apprentice. What do you have to do to be an apprentice? A lot of bullshit. Okay. <laughs> I'd Such as? Sorry. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, hang yeah. on. Sorry. Sorry. I'd appreciate you not using that kind of language. Judge, this gentleman's only been a tattoo artist for one year. I don't see how he could be proffered as an expert. Ms. Hilliard, do you still Which, wish to proffer this witness as an expert in the field of tattoos? Um, Your Honor, for the sake of the court's time, I'm, I'm... Sir, thank you for being here. You are excused. He made me look like an idiot. This expert really has done me no good at all in this trial. In fact, I'm petrified that we're going to lose because of him. I've talked to Natalie and her attorney, and this is her counter, so she wants a 50-50 split on the equity in the house when it sells. She wants the diamond ring. And on these items on the personal property, the items that are highlighted in green are a deal breaker for her. She's not going to give up without those items. Now, I'm not budging off the 53% of what I put into the house. And uh, she's not getting a diamond ring. She already has one. She doesn't need two of them. What's the cost of your sanity? Do you want to just come up with a <clears throat> counteroffer and be sane and be free from this? I she's mean, not having the diamond ring. Okay. Dottie yeah. became a little more unreasonable when he wasn't listening to me. I don't think you're giving her much of a counter offer to, to go on. And Let me go talk to her and, this on. and see. Hopefully we can get this wrapped up. She wants now half of everything. What, what is Donnie getting from the marriage after all that he put in it? He put twice as much in the marriage than she did. Okay. At the end of the day, it comes down to dollar signs, okay? And you're going to spend more to try to get this stuff than you are to say, okay, let's, let's, let's sit down and let's, let's take a look at this again, okay? What would you do? In my shoes, I've spent all that I've spent. I've spent about Do you know 100. what I did? I started my house over well, obviously with a, a table. Obviously, you're a lawyer and you probably make a lot more money than I do. Oh, no. I, I sat no, you, in my condo with a table well, and a mattress for a month, Donnie. And I'm just an average working guy. I don't have a juris doctor to be like you said earlier. Donnie, look, I'm at the point where I feel like you're digging on me personally no, and no, I'm trying no, to help you. No, okay. no, no, no. Okay. Don't, don't okay. Dig well, it all. well I mean, then, let's, let, then let's get off my life and let's go back to yours. I'm not going to advise you for what I did because what I did was just get out of there because I wanted to be out. I'm still so fresh that, you know, I haven't maybe got to that point like okay. you said. You're right. I understand what Donnie was going through with the back and forth, back and forth. When I went through it, it was like I wanted to be divorced. I was scared of being divorced. I was scared I was making the wrong decision. Donnie, I've talked to Natalie again. 
her final offer is she will agree to give you 53.9% of any equity in the house when the house sells. She'll basically take the offer you made to her if you kick in $6,000. Okay. She yeah. gets 46.1%. Yes. Yes. No, I'm good with it. Okay. Yes, as well. I'm just clarifying. Yes, good. Okay, thank you. We've been here all day. It's been a very long day, and we have finally reached resolution. But I, I, I can walk away knowing that I've, you know, given everything that I could you know, give to save my marriage, you know. We will move into closings. You have the opening and concluding argument, Mr. Brockwood. What my client desires here is to have the tattoo removed. She's had a consultation with a doctor that does laser removal for tattoos. It's a little over $6,000. So what we're asking the court to award is damages for the tattoo removal as well as uh, a damage of similar amount for both past and future pain and suffering. All right. Thank you, counsel. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. May I, Your Honor? You may. I love closing arguments because of that word, argument. It's usually best to split up the duties in a trial. One does open, one does close. Cynthia knows every single thing about that case and she will bring it home like a pit bull. Your Honor, this is a clear case of buyer's remorse, but there is no cause of action for buyer's remorse. The court doesn't rule on whether or not this woman may change her mind and in turn make this man responsible. In the end, she didn't get what she wanted. It's not really buyer's remorse, is it, when you get a lemon? Because she's going to argue that I didn't just get a car and get home and decide I paid too much for it. She got home with a car that didn't work. According to her, didn't work. But it didn't work because she didn't voice her opinion. It didn't work because she didn't speak up. It didn't work because she wasn't assertive. She's an adult. She signed a consent form. She's over the age of 18. We heard testimony today that only 25% of this outer markings was done. And then, according to opposing counsel's opening statement and the testimony you heard today, she deferred to the artist to move on. She could have stopped it, but didn't. Past the point of no return. Well, Your Honor, it's also her responsibility to look at her foot. It's also her responsibility to pay attention to what's happening with her body. And she didn't do that. She didn't watch. She didn't look at what was happening. She didn't speak up whatsoever. So my client's sitting on the hot seat. What did this man do? Nothing. This is peroxide. And this is a lack of being assertive and speaking your mind and letting someone else make a decision for you. If you don't make a decision for yourself, don't quit the finger. Thank you for your time. The court's going to take a quick recess to deliberate the case. It was interesting, you know, trying the case with Maggie because she did work for me. I thought she did a good job. I still think I'm going to win. I do. The plaintiff, she's elicited a lot of sympathy from a lot of people in this case. Our expert didn't exactly work out, and frankly, I just know which way this is going to go. Many cases are very close calls. This probably would classify as one of those. I'm going to find in favor of to us and it's just part of the game. It's so nerve-wracking though. Please sit, please. I'm still worried, I'm still nervous. I know that I've really done a good job to maintain some confidence here with Heath. He's only known me as an intern. I've learned a lot since I worked with him. I feel good about it. I feel like I'm on the right side of the law and um, I feel like I have a good case and a good client. Counsel, decisions in these cases are not always easy. Um, many cases are very close calls. This probably would classify as one of those. I, I cannot help but overlook the fact that the actions of an adult in getting a tattoo are certainly permanent, but she is an adult. Responsibilities for ordinary care are not foreign to issues of tort liability. I really believe that this is really an issue of a disagreement over artistic impression, a failure to communicate between the customer and the tattoo artist. Once the background shading got started, it was a losing battle. There was no returning from there. And it is certainly not uh, a pleasant sight, but it is what it is, I suppose. And in the end of the day, I'm going to find in favor of the defendant in this case. I find that you have not met your burden of proving responsibility on, on the part of the tattoo shop owner. 
And as a result, judgment is for the defendant. We're adjourned. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm, I'm ecstatic about this. I love winning. That's why I decided to be a litigation attorney. The plaintiff did not feel her burden just like I thought she couldn't. They jumped in too fast. Thank you. Good game. Losing is never good. It stings, I guess, a little more because it was my former law clerk that won. That's not a great feeling, but, you know, we'll all move on. I'm happy about the verdict, of course. Uh, it, it helps my family. Uh, it helps the business. I just didn't know which way it was going to go. I didn't know. I knew exactly which way it was going to go. You guys did a wonderful job. Well, Thank you so much. We're so I'm happy. flattered. Thank you You guys so are a great much. team. Some of the most rewarding moments in my career have been not so much derived from the litigation I've experienced, but the personal connection with the people that I represent. Thank you we'll so much. Call us if you need us. Oh, absolutely. Take okay, <laughs> care. We hope you don't need us. Tonight is my 30th birthday party. I thought it'd be really fun to bring the girls together to have some sort of symbolic goodbye 20s eulogy. So glad you're out here with me and sharing this moment with me. It's the death to her 20s. So we're all gonna dress as if we're going to a funeral. In my early 20s, I quit biting my nails and over plucking my eyebrows. I'm fully aware of the difference in complaining about things and doing something about them. In my 30s, I hope to be more active, and I've set out to do a lot of things that I didn't quite accomplish in my 20s. I refuse to obsess over finding love. It'll either come or it won't. And I have enough, and I've been abundantly fortunate. Goodbye, 20s. It's fun, <laughs> but I don't want you back. <laughs> I'm not gonna hold on to my 20s. I'm not gonna be one of those girls that says I'm 29 for four or five years. I love this dress but I'm not working my ass off to try to fit in it anymore. And I'm I over want it. it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can I say something? Yeah. All right, this is a self-portrait <laughs> that you painted when you were in your 20s. So <laughs> we're gonna burn this. Burn and, it! Um, you've got a lot of painting to do in your 30s. Set it on fire. Going up in flames. Let's <laughs> We have one more thing that we're not going to do anymore in our 30s. No more depressing breakup music. It's not depressing breakup music. It's indie rock. Bye-bye. Oh. <laughs> Good thing I've got that backed up. <laughs> one of the things I love about you oh. is when you were a prosecutor and I was a public defender, you always had to wear pantyhose when you wore a skirt. <laughs> so bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, gosh. I'll give I mean, you the whole drawer. My 20s were about trial and error. I began my 20s with really no true direction. Thank you guys so much for doing this with me. It just means the world to me. Love you. Happy 30s. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. We love you. Thank you. Bring it on, 30. Let the games begin. I am stoked you are here. It was nice when that painting was on fire. <laughs> Let's set this night on fire. All right. <laughs>